I am saying this with the deepest love and respect for my fellow revolutionists, but spewing vanguardism while promoting materialism makes my head hurt. I am of course referring to Marxist-Leninists, and here I aim to combat their ideas on their own terms. Let's start with the elephant in the room, with one of the fundamentals of materialism. In Capital, Marx described the market relations of commodity exchange as a relationship between the values of goods that obfuscates the creative relationship between labor and goods and the consumer's utility for them at the point of exchange. Marx called this relationship between goods commodity fetishism. He referred to this as fetishism because it is a secular superstition ascribing powers to actuate social and economic activities and functions to commodities and capital, and ascribing the powers of creating commodities to capital and their respective exchange values, while obfuscating the material origins of commodities and capital as emerging from the relationship between labor and materials. Some right-wingers criticize the terminology calling it fetishism because of their pedantic assertion that fetishism strictly refers to the religious ascription of powers or properties to objects, ignoring the fact that there are also secular superstitions holding the same virtue, such as the relationship between broken mirrors and misfortune, the ascription of supernatural powers to inanimate objects all the same, and yet religious doctrines are nowhere to be seen. No, fetishism is merely the attribution of properties or relationships between objects that the objects in question do not appear to express. So commodity fetishism is fetishism. So what does this have to do with vanguardism's incongruous nature toward materialism? The vanguard party, to the ML Zone doctrines, holds properties that are reminiscent of fetishism as how revolutionary activities in the USSR were attributed to the decrees of Lenin and Stalin, or to the determinations of the Communist Party, likewise in other Marxist-Leninist countries, accentuating the revolutionary capacities of the partisans' relationship to the Vanguard Party, but obfuscating the proletarians' revolutionary capacities through their relationship to revolutionary work, deliberated and professed by the party or otherwise of their own accord. The vanguard is ascribed the virtue of carrying forward and defending the revolution via the authority of the state apparatus, but nary a word of the work of the worker being the true material determinant of the revolution. The material nature of the revolution is not, nor could it ever be, determined by the vanguard party's relationship to the apparatus of the state, but the worker's active relationship to the work of the revolution. Parties and states don't carry guns or do work, as they are not material beings. Material beings would have to do those things on the party's behalf instead. The material being's relationship to the material world around them is action, not mandates. Mandates are not actions, but authoritative driving factors of it, informed by the principles within the ideal. So, the relationship between the proletarian and the socialist revolution is their own capacity to act on the basis set out by socialist principles, which can only mean that the Vanguard Party is a two-fold wedge between our principles and our duties as socialists, and between the proletariat and the revolution. So, long story short, the Vanguard Party is, by all accounts to the phrase, the Leninist's fetish. To have any kind of material relationship to revolution, you must first be a material being, and you must conscientiously exercise your capacity to act as such, with or without a vanguard, and all clauses to this point do not reinforce but diminish the importance of the vanguard, or at least the concept as it still presents itself. And Marx himself even spoke against the principle of separating your own social powers away from yourself to form the political powers of the civil state, which by Marx's account is an abstract entity which affirms the abstract citizen in the uniform, not the material being. And I'm not really interested in hearing about any prophecies of how the age of communism will only be ushered in by the vanguard when we're ready. I'm concerned with the work that would make us ready. That is what they're obfuscating, whether deliberately or not. 
because even they consciously know by calling the vanguard a process that it is the work that ushers in that age. But the process of the vanguard is never made quite clear. Compound the fact that material conditions vary between region and historical mode of production and cultural significance, bearing a display of the Warsaw Pact's resounding failures in applying the same methods across many instances of revolution, failures matched only by its inter-regional scope. So it can only follow elegantly by the socialist principle of self-governance and self-determination as exercised through emancipated work informed by our principles as socialists that we accept no substitutes.